the risks are we saw with the colonial pipeline hack for instance that uh, uh you know fuel delivery was shut off to a large part of the northeast uh and then mid-atlantic at that that point so um you know th those are some of the the consequences and risks there's also loss of, of human life if if uh, simple things if someone happens to be working on a generator and it's it's turned on at the wrong time right there someone could actually um suffer uh, some serious injury Hi, this is Yosapal Bhartia and welcome to Apple Let's Talk. Today we have with us Bill Cantrell, Chief Product Officer at Zona Systems. Bill, it's great to have you on the show. Thanks. Thanks, Rob Neil. Good to, good to be here. And today we are going to primarily talk about critical infrastructure owners, uh, how, you know, third party access can, you know, create challenges, opportunity. But before we get into this topic, I would love to know a bit about the company. What do you folks do? What do you specialize in? Because when you look at security in general, it, it, it does, it's becoming a crowded market. It's a sticky market. So talk about the company. Yeah, so Zona Systems does secure remote access for critical systems. Uh, we were founded specifically for that purpose uh, back in uh, 20, uh, 2017. Uh, the project uh, was initially one of the founders had worked uh, at NSA um, and, and done some work in, in critical infrastructure and protecting systems. Uh, so that led to the development of the, the Zona Systems product line, the platform now that uh, secures critical access. The company's headquartered in Hanover, Maryland. And um, yeah, so I founded specifically to provide secure remote access to OT systems. Can you talk about how the cybersecurity space is evolving. I mean, we do remember that before the whole cloud, cloud native arrival, security used to be some other problem. It used to be an afterthought because also the way we are deploying a system was different. You know, you write a software, somebody buys a software, they download it or you ship it a DVD, DVD, and then they run it there. And of course, it has to be an afterthought because it's not running on some other system. You have no control over that. But now everything is, you know, in the cloud. We talk about CI, CD pipeline. Sometimes you 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 are updating your system five or ten times a day. So your security has changed. But from your perspective, how has how is security evolving? That's a great question. Um, you know, and, and having seen it from from the early years, um, you know, security network security has 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 definitely evolved. Um, as you mentioned, you know, from the the early days of just. You know, dial-up lines and interconnecting devices uh, to all the way to cloud. Now, I, I think the biggest change has come with, with remote access. I think that uh, systems, the, the amount of remote access, the amount of online uploads, downloads, um, you know, apps that automatically update themselves has, has greatly changed the security landscape. Uh, yeah, and then obviously things like phishing email, I believe now 90% of, of breaches come through uh, phishing and and um, and various types of spear phishing and that kind of uh, social engineering. Uh, the the real change that that's coming now is is with uh, industrial control systems ICS and OT being more interconnected. That that was that's a more recent event uh, with uh, with COVID and with more remote access required. I think that drove a lot of OT systems to have to be put online in some fashion and allow some form of remote access to deal with that. So that's that's greatly changed that landscape and introduced a lot of uh, potential vulnerabilities to those systems. And just for the sake of viewers, those who may not know, can we just quickly also explain and define when we talk about OT, ICS system, what kind of systems you're talking about? Yeah, so it, it's, a, it's a broad term. Uh, so operational technology, industrial control systems. So that can be anything from the systems that monitor a, a turbine that generates power, uh, water systems, all of the controllers for, for local water systems that monitor water levels and things like that, to manufacturing, where in a manufacturing plant, there's obviously a lot of systems that uh, automated robots, things like that, conveyor belts. So all of that is sort of the, the OT uh, framework. So you have manufacturing, power, power generation, power distribution, uh, water, water systems. Now, let's talk about uh, what kind of risk cyber security risks are there when it comes to third party access and ot ics systems there's a, a lot of uh, risks there obviously the risks are are larger than with some of the other you know if you had to have a credit card breach you you lose money things like that but uh, if you have a breach of uh, a system that controls power to to millions of people 
uh, you obviously have some much bigger problems, water, things like that. So, um, you know, the, the security risk is, is greater because, it, you know, it leads to physical impacts on people. Uh, you know, so that's uh, there, there's there's much larger problems on that side and uh, and much bigger consequences that we, we feel. When you talk about uh, challenges, can you also talk about the nature of the risk? Uh, if you can also share some examples, because risk, I mean, attacks are becoming more and more sophisticated. Also, we are not looking at you know random securities. So because when you look at consumer, the incentive has to be higher, the effort has to be lower, they look at the low hanging fruit. But when it comes to OT, ICS systems, what kind of risks specifically are we looking at? The risks are, we saw with the Colonial Pipeline hack, for instance, that uh, uh, you know fuel delivery was shut off to a large part of the Northeast uh, and then Mid-Atlantic at that, that point. So um, you know, th- those are some of the, the consequences and risks. There's also loss of, of human life if, if uh, simple things, if someone happens to be working on a generator and it's, it's turned on at the wrong time, right? There, someone could actually um, suffer uh, some serious injuries. So uh, the, there's, there's some large risks. I, I think the, the, and the online access is what's um, generating even more risk in that, uh, in that area. You know, the, the VPN access, things like that. We're applying some older technologies that aren't very secure to access some systems that need to be extremely secure. So VPN technologies date way back and, and have a lot of holes and uh, security issues. Now, when we talk about the OT system, IC system, how prepared do you think we are? You gave example of Conolian Pipeline, and we are also entering a phase where a lot of cloud conflicts are going globally. You know, we can look at Middle East, we can look at Europe, we can also look at Asia. There might be some conflict going on there. Are our system really that secure? Or what are the things that keep you awake at night? Yeah, that that's a great question. That, that some of that stuff does keep you keep me awake at night. Um, if you look at the recent breaches in in major telecoms here in the U.S., right? Uh, there, I think it was seven or eight telecoms now um, were, were breached. Um, you know, threat actors, nation state actors out of China were able to access uh, phone calls, conversations, text messages, uh, and this is this is from malware that's that's been sort of laying in wait. Um, it, it's not the kind of malware where like, like ransomware where it goes in, locks everything down. It just, they, they've been in there for quite some time. They've obviously expanded across. So living off the land type tech uh, capabilities where they expand slowly across the infrastructure. You know, if they're, they're in several of the major telecoms, it stands to reason that they're, they're probably in uh, some of the ICS systems, energy systems, power distribution already. So the question there is, you know, I think there needs to be more more serious effort on on cleaning systems up, looking for stuff that may already be there. Um, I, I don't think we're prepared for that. I think we're we're starting to wake up to that. Um, yeah, I think there's initiatives. There's there's uh, we were just out at a Tech Connect conference for the DoD. Uh, in Austin, Texas, and there's there's a lot of push to start looking at more security for these systems. Uh, but uh, there's also who funds it, where does money going to come from, how are we going to do this? So there's there's still a lot to be done, a lot of work to be done there. What you just said seems uh, quite is scary, but can you give us some pragmatics, some positives, some you know silver lining that what are the efforts that are going on there? not only just from the government sector, because Biden, they did some good job uh, through some executive orders. They work on the, you know, uh, as bombs and a lot of other executive orders are where to ensure cybersecurity and AI system security. What effort are being going on? And if you can also talk about how the Zona system, you folks help in organizations to run OT and ICE system more securely? There's definitely a lot of uh, good efforts going on, both both here and abroad. If you look at the EU with their, their CRA initiative uh, and, and forcing vendors to provide more secure software from the start um, and, and having consequences for, for not doing it. So, uh, so some of those are, are, are great things to get started. I mean, it starts with the software uh, for some of these systems to begin with. You, know, you, you can protect the systems, but the more inherently secure they are, 
uh, you know, the better. So it, it's S, like you mentioned, S bombs. Looking at um, the, the 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 build process, there's a lot of talk about uh, engineering for security, um, software development lifecycle type things. So so starting that process earlier on. Uh, and then there are, there are initiatives, CMMC here in the U.S., where uh, some of the DOD um, uh, infrastructure is is the, the suppliers, right? The DOE suppliers are being required to uh, up their level of uh, security, so um, and meet some of those monitoring requirements on a continual basis. Uh, you know, those those are good starts, and and there's a lot of initiatives to. Uh, to try and secure industrial control systems. There's a mosaics architecture. There's uh, several projects around the country. DOD is uh, now updating their zero trust architecture to include OT systems. So a lot of good initiatives. And, and I think the technology, there's a lot of more, uh, you know, in the past it's been here's security technology. Let's just, you know, either not secure the OT stuff and leave it air gap, which is no longer possible, or just use some of this same technology, which which doesn't really fit the OT world. I think there's more uh, companies like like ourselves that are uh, from the ground up designed to protect OT systems and and really provide a much higher layer of security that that you wouldn't have for regular workstations and IT assets. Now let's just also talk about not just the system, but these systems, they do need access to third party. What are the risks associated with access to third party? Let's talk about the risks and then we talk about how to mitigate them. Yeah, so the the, the risks are, are numerous and you've, you've seen breaches um, even uh, back to the target breach where that was a third party system HVAC company that had VPN access into their uh, into their network, and that's how those threat actors got in. So uh, any, anytime you have third parties and you're allowing folks outside the network to connect, there's there's obvious vulnerabilities. You, you have third party uh, devices that you've got no control over. You, you oftentimes don't know the security posture of those devices. So, um, and, and if you're using just a standard VPN, you're essentially opening up a connection into your network. You're allowing network access to a device that may not be trusted. So, so um, obviously a plethora of uh, issues there. Now let's talk about uh, what can be done to mitigate the risk and what is Zona doing there? So Zona is providing a, a higher layer of, of secure remote access. So our technology uh, allows third parties to access uh, our device via a web interface, but they don't actually get connectivity into the, the network side of the system. So we essentially uh, allow them to access it. They get a console view, essentially a, a video view of the uh, OT interface that's inside the network. So they can move a mouse, they can enter some keystrokes, uh, but they can't directly load software onto the system. They don't have access to the system itself. Uh, they simply can uh, can do what's allowed, um, and, and it's either read only or they're allowed to input some keystrokes and uh, and and mouse movements. So uh, a much higher layer of security. There's there's no way for them to push a file down. If if their file transfers are needed, they go into a a bucket. File transfers can be scanned, and then they need to be approved by uh, the local administrator. So. Um, something that's a much stricter level of, of security than you would be cried for for IT folks, but uh, uh, but then again, uh, obviously the consequences as we've talked about with OT and IT systems are much greater. So, whenever we talk about security, we always talk about culture because you know security. You can bring a horse to a lake, but cannot make it drink. So, what what role do you see of culture, processes, practices in ensuring OT ICS assets? You know security and safety yeah, one of the things we've tried to do is is make it it simple right so a lot of these ot folks there's there's a lot of complex systems they're they're not necessarily uh, networking people so uh, I, I think as you look at uh, deployments and and what concerns these these people they they just want uh, uh, remote access that's that's very secure and that's easier to configure so uh, i think keeping things at that level, making sure that, yeah, you know, there's there's less to make mistakes on. The more complex a security system becomes, the more chance there is for a misconfiguration, something to be left open, 
um, you know, that, that, that's another big issue. So uh, I, I think making things easier to use, um, uh, you know, some of the, the standard, standards easier to understand and what needs to be accomplished from a security perspective uh, are, are very important. So we, we've tried to uh, stay on a, on a very easy to use, very um, um, straightforward um, deployment capability. Can you also talk about the cost and how Zuna can help organizations bring the cost down so that they don't have to make compromises with security? Now, when it comes to cost, it's both culture. When you train people, that is also cost. And when you tools the technology, that's also. But when something goes wrong, that is heavy cost. Yeah, so so cost is is obviously one of the biggest uh, concerns, and and it it varies by the the industries we deal with. You know, some of the the rural water systems have uh, very little money to spend on security, and and it's a much bigger issue there. Uh, our uh, power generation, obviously, there's more money, there's more concern, there's there's more regulation. You have things like NERC SIP uh, that are forcing them um, to actually uh, implement certain strategies and uh, technologies. So, uh, you know, by by keeping our solution uh, simple, um, less components, uh, there's not multiple components, there's not uh, multiple interactions that have to be done with some of the existing tools like the, the firewalls, uh, and, and integrating with their existing systems rather than trying to get uh, a whole lift and shift approach to, um, to, to, to a security architecture, integrating with whatever they have already for um, single sign-on, identity management, uh, uh, some of the back-end processes where we're, we, we we're very good at integrating with those systems and allowing customers to just insert a secure, a secure access technology, remote access technology uh, that works well with everything they have so they, they can uh, cost-effectively do that rather than trying to get them to swap out identity management solutions and other bigger systems. Since you just uh, threw a keyword, identity, you know, access management, there are a lot of other uh, practices, technologies, you know, access control, identity management. And then if you look at the broader security, we can start looking at observability, we can start looking at zero trust. I mean, it's a very complex, very wide. Uh, can you talk about what kind of solutions Zona is offering and how they can be easily integrated with other tools that companies may be using? So our platform allows, obviously, secure remote access uh, uh, for technicians and, and third parties via via web. So uh, the cost effective from that perspective, in the sense you no longer need uh, the VPN capability. You can uh, you can simply web into to the interface um, uh, and and use that for secure access. You can also centralize uh, the applications that these technicians need, rather than having to have it loaded on every single technician's laptop. Uh, and he may be out on the road calling him from somewhere on an unsecure Wi-Fi connection. Uh, he can simply connect into uh, a remote device and open that application up remotely uh, so he gets much better, um, higher speed access to the, the back end systems and a, and a much more secure connection. Um, so uh, I think I deviated from your question a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but as far as integrating with existing tools, uh, things like ServiceNow uh, for, for turning up uh, users, turning down users, it's very important that we integrate with systems like that uh, and into the processes that customers have so that as, uh, you know, if, if a third-party vendor no longer has access or they've moved away from that vendor or if someone internally even, uh, you know, is terminated, that the, the systems can be integrated with us to quickly uh, eliminate those those um, identities within our system. So, uh, you know, whether it's it's someone like a CyberArk or ServiceNow, we can integrate with those types of identity and, and uh, process systems. Bill, thank you so much for joining me today. Of course, talk about the system, but also give a very good overview insight into the security of ODIC system. Thanks for great insights. And as usual, I would love to have you back on the show. Thank you. Great. No, thanks for your time. And maybe uh, you're close by. Maybe next time we can do this in person. So. <laughs>